Hey, what's happening everybody? My name is Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. When I started coding, I really thought about what are the basic coding principles that make coding easier and thereby designing on the web easier. And so I sat down and I said, here are the six web design basic coding principles that you should know. Plus I have two more extras at the very end, two bonus pieces for you to know further to make your code rock and roll and thereby make your design rock and roll as well. And with that, let's get started. CSS from top to bottom, biggest to smallest. What do I mean by that? Well, if we look at a basic website, I've got a basic HTML page right here, HTML head title, link head and body. And if you're brand new to CSS, it can seem overwhelming because by default, CSS looks like this. It's empty. And CSS stands for cascading style sheets. And the word cascading is very, very important. So what I like to do in CSS is start from line one. What's the biggest to the smallest piece of code? Well, in the HTML, the body is always the biggest. Technically, the HTML is, but the body is what you actually see. So the body is what I want to affect throughout this entire design. In the styles I set up, CSS, I'd put the body at the top and say background color, let's go black just to make sure we see it in action. So now it's black. So because of that, we should probably set a default color of type to white. So in this case, what I'm going to say is color white. And what that's going to do is that's going to affect all of the type inside the body. Now, let's say, for example, I want to change this H1 not to white, but to gray. Well, in the styles area, that says every single color of type inside the body is going to turn to white. Well, as I said, top to bottom, biggest to smallest. So now we're going smaller. The H1 is going to get a color. Isn't there like a sea smoke, I believe? Or let's go slate gray. So what's going to happen in CSS is now it turned gray. That's because the body said everything inside the body by default turn white. However, now I've gone biggest to smallest. I only have a small example being body and H1, but the H1 is smaller or inside of the body saying, you know what? Don't make the background or don't make the color white, make the color slate gray. And what's going to happen is if I put anything else in this design or if I put a paragraph, this text is still white. And what's going to happen is now the text is still white. So in CSS, think about biggest to smallest, top to bottom. And when I say top to bottom, what I'm talking about is when you do a design, you're going to have a navigation, some main content, main content, not that way, and a footer. And what you'll do in CSS or what I recommend doing is keeping the navigation design at the top of your CSS, the main content in the middle of the CSS and the footer at the bottom of the CSS. That way you'll know in your CSS, the top, middle and bottom of the HTML or any other coding language you're using corresponds to the top, middle and bottom of your footer. And that's how I design my CSS biggest to smallest, top to bottom. The box model. What exactly is the box model? Well, in coding, everything has a rectangle around it. In H1, a paragraph, even the body is inherently a rectangle. So let's write a basic div. Let's talk about what a box model is. If I say div, I'll say this is a box. And let's make this box some kind of color so you can see what it looks like. So in our div, I'm going to go into CSS, and if you watched the previous part of CSS top to bottom, then you would have seen this part right here. So let's say in here that we're going to say div and background color, we'll say yellow, just so we can see it. Actually, we're going to be on white, so you take out that background. Let's say green. That's better. So we have a green box. So notice how this green box spans across the entire page. This is part of the box model. So the box model is inherently a rectangle. 
Now there's three parts to the box model. There's the inside or the content, and then there's also the border. So if I say border, and we'll say 5px solid red. And that's the next part to a box model. All objects inherently have a background color, which if you don't set one, is gonna be default transparent. Then the border comes in. So what I have here is this red outline. And then we have margins and padding. So what the padding does, let's say padding colon, and we'll say 20, we'll say 30 pixels. I typed the wrong number, 30 pixels. So notice what happened when padding came in. Padding pushes your content inside of the box. So that means that all four sides, if I said padding, that equals top, right, bottom, and left. When I did that, it added padding on the top, the bottom, the left, and the right. You can't see really the right, but it's there. What margin does, if we say margin 30 pixels, notice what happened there. The margin pushed away from the box. So margin goes out, padding goes in. And this also equates to math. So if I said width equals 100 pixels, it's not 100 pixels really. We're thinking about the content. This is actually, if we do our math, it's 100 pixels plus 30 pixels plus 30 pixels, and we also have, that's left margin, and then we have right margin, then we have 30 pixels left padding, 30 pixels right padding, and we have five pixels border left, hello left, five pixels border right. I will, well, what the heck, we'll do it for the fun of it. A little pseudo classes in there. So this is your basic math. So the overall width of this space is 100 plus 30 plus 30 plus 30 plus 30 plus five plus five. And that's how the box model works. Every object has a margin, has a padding, has a border, and can also contain a background color. But the box model is border, padding, margin, and width. And this is how you can design for it across all areas of web design. But remember that padding goes in and margin pushes out. And that's the box model. So let's talk about inline versus block. What does it mean and what does it do? So we have a div from our previous example, and let's go back in our index, and I'm gonna talk about the div versus span. This is inline, and this is block. So what do I mean by inline versus block? So let's take a look at these two. I'm gonna save this. I'm also gonna use background colors. I use background colors a lot in so I can see where things go and if the CSS even works. To me, if the background color doesn't show up in a particular instance, then I know that my code is not working properly and it's not the CSS's fault. So if I say div and span, let's put a background color of green on this one as well. So we have a div background color green and a span background color green. If I save this, notice the two differences in how it shows up. Even though I do not recommend using break tags for spacing, in this case, I will use a break tag just to separate the two in this crude rudimentary style, but generally do not recommend using break tags to create spacing. So notice the difference in these two designs. This is a block and this is an inline. The block stretches out to fill the space of its parent. So the body is the parent of this block level element or a div. The span tag is an inline and what it does is it fills the space of the content. So notice how this space right here just goes to the edge of the text. And let's actually change our text to white. So we'll say body color white. 
And now if I say, well, <laughs> now those twos are also white as well. But anyways, it's okay. So notice how this block goes across and this inline just stays right there. If I add padding, and we'll say 100 pixels just to make sure we see what it looks like. And we'll say padding. Notice it still maintains the space. This text just pushed in inside the block and this inline just pushed in as well. So nothing else happened really in that case. It's just that notice the spacing around the areas. That piece, making sure I had an error message I thought show up on my screen that this is how the padding margins, so if I say margins as well, from our last example talking about the box model, if I say margin 50 pixels, and down here we'll say, oh, I just lost that piece, margin 50 pixels, now it comes inside of there. So this is the difference between a block level element where it stretches across the entire page and an inline element. Now, what elements are inline versus block? This part just takes practice, whereby H1s, H2s, paragraphs are by default block level elements, span tags and other elements are inline. Now, what you can also do is Google search, and I know you came here for the examples, but as you start to look at it, think about and remember what as you're working with different objects, what is inline versus block, and a basic Google search will tell you if it's an inline or a block level element. But I wanted to show you the inherent differences between the two pieces. One stretches the entire page or fills its parent, and the span or the inline element just fills the content in which it's working. All right, so far all we've typed in here are just tags. Now tags inherently are the most powerful tools to use in HTML. They're the biggest piece in the first element that shows up just after the less than sign. They're the almighty powerful code. However, if you have two H2, so let's say we say H2, this is a subtitle, and we say H2, Nope, not the H3, H2. This is another subtitle. How do I differentiate the two? So how do I say this one needs to be certain design, this one needs to be a secondary design? Well, that's where classes come in. So let me do a couple things of cleanup from our last design. We'll go back to scratch, save, save. Now we're back to just the H1, the H2, and the H2. So the fundamental differences between classes and IEDs. Classes can be used more than once. So someone once told me, and I used to teach university, think about when you take courses at a university, you're taking multiple courses. That is a class, classes are courses. So you can have multiple classes on the HTML versus when you sign up for a university, you're gonna have a school ID or a student ID. You're only gonna have one of those IDs, not multiple IDs. So thereby what's gonna happen is, let me also indent these, I just noticed that. But what you're going to have is only one ID per page, case in point. So in styles, what I'm gonna say is, let's say, make this green. Normally I don't color code my classes, but in this example, I just wanna make it that way. And let's say color green, and I'll save this. Then what I'm gonna do is, in my index, I can say class equals make this green. What's gonna happen is that's gonna turn green. Now I can also use multiple classes. So what I can also do here is I can say, which would be silly, but it's still I can do this, is make this red and color red. So I can write two classes in the same area. So class, make this green, nah, make this red. Would I do this normally? No, but this to prove a point, I can put multiple class names in the same area. This one went first, this one went second, but in the cascading effect, one, two, two wins. So now it turns red. 
In IEDs, and notice how classes are with periods. This is the mark of classes. In our previous examples, we didn't have any periods because they were all tags. Periods make up classes and pound signs make up this is an ID. And we will then say color purple. So I can only add one ID at a time for this is an ID. So in here for this H1, I'll say ID equals, what did I just say? This is an ID and ID was capital. So now what's gonna happen is this turn purple, but I cannot write nothing else can go here. It's not gonna work, it would fail, but if I save it, it's just gonna go back to black because it doesn't know what to do. So IDs can only be used once, as in this is an ID, and I'll take this out. But classes can be used more than once. So what do I use more of? I use classes. I can apply classes anywhere I want to. So if I wanna make this subtitle green, I'll say class equals make this green. And when I save it, it's gonna work. So this is an important part of working between the two classes versus IDs. They inherently do the same thing in CSS. All that differentiates them are a pound sign versus a period. But when you start coding, classes are used, I would say 95 out of 100 times because you can use multiple classes versus IDs are only used once. I really only use an ID if I'm gonna set it specifically in a head or a body or somewhere that's gonna really ground the design. And IDs are also used as anchors when you create more one-page websites as well, but that gets a little more advanced design. I think about classes, like I said, 95 out of 100 times versus IDs. So when in doubt, jump into the classes versus IDs unless you have something specific you wanna set up as an ID. And that's the difference between classes and IDs. Less code equals better code, usually. When I code and I work in CSS and HTML, when you're just starting out, it's easy to make class names galore. Notice how if I take out this is red, that notice H2 class make this green and H2 class make this green. Notice how I have written class make this green twice. Well, if I use the mantra of less code equals better code, and if I step that even further, I always say less code equals less mistakes because there's chances and there's great chances, speaking from yours truly, that I'm bound to make a mistake. I might put an extra letter E inside the word green or something else and I come and test it and I'm like, wait, why did this one not work and this one did work? Well, if I notice that I'm putting make this green across all my H2s, instead of having classes you can definitely do here, what if I then said body H2 or make all H2s make this green? So if I take this out again, thinking in a different way, going, well, do I need a class or can I say, instead of make this green, I know I want all H2s across my website to be green. And now what happened is less code achieved the same effect. So I think about going back to that first, or I should say second part, where it was CSS from top to bottom, biggest to smallest. When I'm writing code, can I rely on my CSS to say, hey, set all the big pieces up at the top, but if I wanna make something specific at the very bottom. Now, when I say less code usually is better, this isn't always the case, because if I wanna apply this H2 and then make it red, here's the problem. So if I said H2 class equals, how did I spell it? I did uppercase camel case style. There we go. Make this red. So what can happen is you can also be careful on because at times you can be careful on not making this mistake where I set all H2s go green, but then I put the class making it red. So this is where I say usually because think about what you wanna do first. But also notice if you're making multiple repetitions of something, go back to its parent and set the style. In this case, the class is the child, 
but the H2 is the parent when it comes to design. So thereby, if I say, you know what, I really don't wanna have this on all my H2s. And if you find yourself repeating the same code over and over again, look for a better way of coding. So think about how can I design with code with less code and less specific. I said make all H2s this design, but I might have a header or a footer with an H2, so I might have to say, you know what, make the main H2s, but then make the footer H2 color gray, or not green, because that would defeat the purpose. There we go. So what would happen is the main section, and we'll just set it up right over here. So if I take these H2s, and I'm gonna say main, and drop them in. And then I'm gonna say footer and drop them in again. Now what I have done is say all the main H2s be green and all the footer H2s turn gray. Again, less code, usually better code. So notice how I said main and footer. And this really thinks about parent and child relationships. And if you notice, I've said parent and child a couple times. So what is a parent and what is a child? And if you notice, the main encompasses, or if I have this little cool piece, chink. What I like about VS Code, if you haven't used it, you should download it. I'll make a link as well in these descriptions. But in the main area, notice how I can kind of collapse the area. The main of this H2 is the parent. Now, parents control all the childs by default, unless you make the H2 do something else. So note in my styles area that I said main H2. That's saying that all the H2s inside the main. So let me make a comment at the very top here to make this work. So I said, if I make a comment, parent first, child second. I can also say main and then thereby say color green, but that would affect all the type inside of the main. I wanted to make only the H2s inside of the main be green. And as I said before, I wanted all the H2 footers to be gray. So if I take this piece out, there we go. I'm using it whereby the parent controls the green and the footer controls the gray, but it passes it down to the child to actually activate it. We're separating these two H2s. Come on, VS Code, stop giving me the tooltips. I'm separating these H2s by its parent. And it's also to note that I'm not having to worry about adding any classes. Again, less code equals better code in here because I've used only tags to differentiate the two. When in doubt, I try to think about my tags first, then my classes, because if I can achieve something by only using tags, I've written less code, better code, and this is thereby saying I wanna rely upon these two areas. Now be careful because it's easy to go parent, child, 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 and go way down here. I can say H2 class, third level child. Inherently, you have main being the parent, H2 being the child, and third level child class being the child, whereby what I can also say if I go that deep is I can say main H2 third level child color red. And now what happens is that this is gonna go all the way down. So be aware of that. Also what I have to do, stop, is I have to drop it back to connect the H2 with third level child. There we go, I missed a space there. Do note in this instance that what I have in this case is a parent child in CSS. However, the H2 or the tag is the big guy on campus. The class whereby right here in color red didn't override the H2 because the tag takes precedent. I have to back this up one little dot and connect H2 dot third level child. 
since I wrote H2 class third level child and thereby it works. But note that if you're gonna go that far, now we're going to parent, child, child, be careful how many levels in your child level goes, but do be aware how you're gonna write it in CSS as well, because in theory, this is the parent, and then this is the child in CSS as well. And getting to understand parent and child relationships is really important. And again, it goes back to less code equals better code. I know I said I'd have six, but I've got two more for you as well. The first is make sure you indent your code. And what I mean by that is notice the difference between this readability on screen here. And if I go back, notice this right here. It's much more difficult to read code when it's not indented because we haven't followed the parent and child practices. That's because the body in this design is inside or nested or the child of the HTML. So what I should do is, and the head should also be as well. I think I was moving things around earlier. So the head is a child of the HTML just as the body is. Then the H1 should be indented and so should the main and the footer. And then inside the main, the H2 and the H2 and the H2. This is important for also not just visually seeing it, but seeing, did I leave? No, oh, cancel, stop. I should turn the tooltips off. Notice this problem right here. If I save this, it looks like everything's fine, but everything's not fine because I haven't closed the footer. This is really helpful to look visually down the screen and go, okay, body open, body closed. Main open, main closed. Footer open, yo. Uh -oh. Footer closed. And so it's also helpful to see if you're missing an open or close tag because we can visually see it down the screen. This is also where you can do two things. Where if I say the H2, I can also indent the code inside the H2 if I just wanna make sure I'm closing all of my tags. If it's something small like this, you can keep it if it inline, but if you just feel you wanna see even better readability, you can indent your text inside of a tag to even have better readability. But this is a bonus piece to indent your code. And I know I said I had six plus a bonus, but I've got a bonus bonus. If you've been noticing in my code throughout the past couple examples, like parent first, child second, notice how it turns green. This is helpful because it is notes or what's called commenting your code. And commenting your code essentially says to the web browser, don't read this. This is just for you, the web designer slash developer to make notes in your code. What I do a lot of times is I might wanna say something like footer, starts here and with Coda Sublime VS Code, I have not checked Dreamweaver because honestly, well, I just don't touch Adobe Dreamweaver, but you can turn your code to say command slash, whoops, it's command, come on. There we go, hitting the right keys. Hitting command shift does not do the trick as I just found out right there. Hitting command slash turns the line into a comment. So what I can say is footer starts here, and then what I'll usually do is I'll say footer ends here. And now what I'll do, come on slash, is I'll make my footer, I can find it very easily in my code. Now yes, I only have 25 lines of CSS, but you can have five, six, thousands of lines of CSS. And when you comment pieces, you're making notes. And it's easy to do it right in front of us right now. I'm recording this in the very same day. But if I come back to this project in six or eight months, I'm not gonna remember where everything is. So thereby, by making comments, it really helps. The same with HTML or any other code, JavaScript, JSX, PHP, you name the language, will still reference commenting. So I might wanna say end main content here. And what that's gonna do is it just says, hey, end the main content. 
Now what I can also do, and this gets helpful when I have a lot more div tags, is I might wanna say div ID container. And then I'm gonna add a close div and indent it back. And then I'm gonna add another div and I will say div class ID, or we'll say class. Keep saying class and ID. Class will say header. And now I have div, div, now close div, now close div. I might wanna say in my HTML, close container. Did I spell it right? I don't know if it's spelled right or not. And now what I can do is I can close this container by putting it right below it and knowing that's with the container. And I can then say here, close header. Tool tips drive me crazy this morning. So notice I'm making notes to this div. So if I've got a ton of content inside my header and content inside my container, it's helpful to note your close elements because it's less likely you're gonna lose where the divs are in part because you properly indented them from previous bonus information and going a step further, adding comments in. Note how I'm just hitting command slash to turn on or off one line or what I can also do is select multiple lines and it'll add appropriate commenting information depending upon HTML, CSS, JSX, JavaScript, PHP. I'm probably forgetting more languages, but at least in Visual Studio Code and also in Coda, it'll properly know the right style of formatting to write comments in. This is your bonus bonus write comments. It'll help you not right now, but six months down the road when you come back and revisit your project. I hope these six plus, I guess would be two more. So it'd be, I guess these eight web design basic coding principles will help you become a better designer through code. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video and keep on coding and inherently designing.